Welcome to Worthy Ones, the video series where I take all the newest issue one comic books that I read for the current comic book week and deem them worthy or not worthy. Guys, I'm Mike Spider Slayer. Welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0. If you love daily comic book content, if you love me helping you make decisions of what comic books to buy, guys, you came to the right place. Also, why don't you consider becoming a member of my YouTube channel? Just go on to the, the homepage, hit that join button, and as low as 99 cents, you guys can have early access to my videos. You can have stickers when you make your comments on my videos. You can also uh, have stickers when you watch the live streams that I do as well. And you also have monthly badges to let you know how long you've been a member of my YouTube channel so you can flex that awesome sticker. So yeah, consider all that. So just to let you know as well, we have four issue number ones that came out this week that I read, and we're going to have a bonus comic. Of course, it's going to be Ultimate Spider-Man that we're talking about at the end, and you're not going to want to miss that. So all that stuff out of the way now, let's go ahead, let's kick it off. Are you ready for it? Jackpot and Black Cat. This is issue one. This is a 40-page comic for five dollars the writer here is celeste Brofman, and emilio liazzo is the artist here the art is pretty good it's not bad the characters look really nice i i feel like uh felicia at times needs to zip up that costume just a little bit because you know those boobs are hanging out pretty bad over here uh in this comic i'm gonna show you one page here like <laughs> this particular page right here like look at that man i was like okay felicia we're going a little x-rated here um when it comes to you know jackpot or mary jane i should say i'm just not a fan of the costume okay and i think what really ruins it for me is those stupid sunglasses or those goggles whatever the frick those things are you know i just i don't know why she wears them it doesn't serve a purpose i would rather see a mask or something like that uh character interactions in this comic when it comes to mj and felicia it's okay, you get to see that friendship there a little bit. Not as good as Jed McKay did, but uh, it was still serviceable. Now, when it comes to the interactions with Paul and MJ, you feel no romance in this comic whatsoever. It's like they just look at each other as partners. Now, I don't know if that's because of the loss of kids and she's still not really into them. Like, what's the deal there? They, they just... They're just like, Paul, can you give me the coordinates of this or that? And he's like, yeah, MJ, I give you this. This is what you have to do. Okay, Paul, there's no like, hey, thanks, honey. You're the best. You're the sweetest. I love you. You mean all this. There's nothing there. It's like this ice cold relationship. So if these two are romantically involved or have some kind of higher relationship, then I wish they would express that a little bit more. As much as I fucking hate Paul, it's just if they're going to be that way, then be that way. We see a relationship with Felicia here, right? And you don't see that in Paul. And the whole reason, the whole point of this comic in, in the story is that Felicia is robbing the villain Chance's casino um aircraft or whatever it is because she's being blackmailed by this mysterious app and it's causing people to do things that they don't want to do or they threaten their loved ones so she's doing it for this mysterious love you know person that we don't really know i guess that's where she's been the past few months and why she wasn't in gang war she's busy hooking up with this chick right and, uh, you know, there's a couple of forced things when it comes to, I guess, maybe this writer's beliefs because we talk about uh, plastic packaging going into the ocean. And then we talk about steaks, how the industry is contributing to the extinction of thousand, you know, species. So there's a little jabs in there. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, we wind up seeing Mary Jane butt heads or try to, I guess not butt heads, but interact with, uh, you know, the situation that's going on with Felicia and she tries to help her out and it kind of backfires and you're led to believe that Mary Jane and Black Cat are going to be working together. So, you know, at the end of the day, this comic wasn't the worst thing I ever read. I thought it was better than that one shot. So I'm going to deem this book worthy, believe it or not. 
However, that's just for me because I want to see where it goes. It wasn't a very good comic. It was average at best. Um, but I have a feeling that a lot of people are actually going to find this not worthy. So, you know, take it for what it is. Make your own judgment call on this if you decided to read this. Um, but... Again, I've read worse, and this is by far not the best, so I'll give it another try, see where it goes. Again, the whole Paul thing, he's just forced into this comic, uh, but the overall story was a little bit interesting, so we'll see where it goes. At the end of the day, I'm going to give this one a C. It was average. It's just one of those books where it's, I want to see where it goes. I am real curious in the comments below. What do you guys think about this one? Sam and Twitch Case Files. This is issue one. This book is a 32 page comic for $3. Uh, the writer here is Todd McFarlane, and the art here is done by uh, Kadrinsky. I think that's the name that I came up with. <laughs> here is the interior artwork in this comic. It, you know, it's okay. It, it didn't like blow my mind in any stretch of the imagination. I was actually expecting a little bit better in this. And I guess I could say that maybe I was a little bit disappointed, right? Uh, the, the worst thing about this comic book is why do you not have any word bubbles in it? Like, this is the first comic book that I ever read that does not have word bubbles and it interferes in reading the comic so badly like it gets lost in the artwork and you're just like kind of trying to find what you're reading here so for instance like in this top part right here it's on the ceiling it's it's black here it's white over here it's just it's camouflaged in there it really messes things up and hopefully they fix that in the future uh maybe they'll realize that it doesn't work but it's just it's god awful and i could not stand it now the story of Sam and Twitch is they're detectives, right? And they are in the Spawn universe. And the way this book opens up is some, some like, I guess, ex-gangbanger kid or whatever it is, is not helping Sam out, which is the heavier set detective. And he gets his nose crushed. And he's just not working with Sam the right way. He's supposed to be his eyes and ears on a particular case. And what happens is Twitch comes in. They get called to the detective office. And they're just told that, you know, Sam is too much of a loose cannon. And Twitch is the one that, you know, kind of looks after him. He's, you know, their partners. And he's been babying him. And they get suspended for, you know, unnecessary violence or whatever it is. And uh, it's... It's just that's what this whole comic is it's a conversation in an office and I guess maybe you're getting an idea of who the characters are and how their personalities are in case you've never read these characters before but at the end of the day by the time you get to the end of this book it looks like you're getting to of what's going on with 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 the case here there's this horrific murder that happened this mass murder or whatever and they're acquiring the help of sam and twitch because they seem to be like the best detectives and of course they wind up getting suspended so they're not available to do this case and that's kind of how the book ends this book is worth it. i'm not gonna discredit it yet I feel that it has potential i think these characters are good i feel like it's lacking. It's not a spectacular book where you sit there and you say, listen, I have to read issue two of this. They give you a, a little bit of the characters. They give you a little bit of their personalities. But the hook was just like, okay, there's a bunch of dead murder people, murdered people on the floor, and that was it. You got bad lettering. The artwork is okay. Like, there wasn't anything really here to sit there and go, man, I got to continue it, right? Uh, but I'm giving it another issue. But at the end of the day, I'm going to give this one a D+. Plus. I was definitely very turned off by this comic book. But I'm only finding it worthy, I guess, for me. 
and not for you guys. You might want to stay away from this one. So yeah, tough, tough book right here. X-Men 97, this is issue one. This is the official prelude to the highly anticipated Disney Plus show that's already out. We're three episodes in at this point. I've watched the first two episodes, and this comic, yes, is definitely a prelude. If you've watched the show already, um, you get things that happen in this comic that lead into the show. I mean, it's pretty cool. So this one's 40 pages, $5. Uh, the creators here is Steve Fox, and the artist is Sal Salvador Espion. Um, the art has that animated feel to it. It's almost what you would expect in the show. Uh, and I appreciate that that they went there with it, right? The characters are very much in character. They're written the way you would expect from the animated show. Uh, we got to see them all. Cyclops, Jubilee, Wolverine, Rogue, Gambit, Storm, Bishop. We get to see all of them. And in this issue, we wind up getting to see Dazzler uh, as well as you wind up seeing our heroes uh, having to rescue Dazzler uh, based off of a situation that is happening. I don't want to give away too much in case you haven't watched the show yet, uh, but it was it was pretty cool. Then also you get to see a specific villain at the end of this comic that if you've watched the original X-Men series, he's one of the main villains in there. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And there was also another group of characters in there as well that were very much in the original X-Men cartoon also. But it was really cool to see all these different characters. And I'm going to find this comic book worthy. This one was a lot of fun. It's definitely a nice little companion piece to the animated show. And uh, there's something that happens in Jean Grey to Jean Grey in this comic book where she's trying to let Cyclops know. And Cyclops is just so narrow-minded. And Wolverine is just so... Oh, he's so angry, and he, he he's like, man, I want to hook up with Jean Grey so bad, but it's awesome, man. It's just, it's, it has all those little story threads that you know and love over the years from X-Men. So, at the end of the day, was this the best comic I've ever read? No, but it was fun. So, I'm going to give this one a B. I definitely recommend it, like I said, if you are currently watching the animated series. Feral issue one. This is a highly anticipated comic this week. This is a 28 page comic for four bucks written by Tony Fleece, who did Stray Dogs. The artist here is Tone Rodriguez and Tris Forster. Um, the art is very like Disney inspired. It, it just reminds you of that old school Disney animation. The characters are full of emotion and an expression and that's what you want in your comic you want to feel what's going on with these characters okay now if you read this comic and you're kind of like i don't see what's so appealing to this book you have you read stray dogs first read that series read it in its entirety pick up that trade and you're going to see that that book is full of emotion and I loved it. And I'm sure you're going to get this in this comic book as well. And you can't help to see the pain and the anguish at times that these characters or cats or pets are going through. And if you're an animal lover, I feel like you're going to like this a little bit more as well. Maybe more because you're a cat. Maybe less because this is cats. But nevertheless, it's going to be cool. So... This book focuses on what is a rabies outbreak. And we see cats wind up being picked up by animal control, going to an animal shelter. And this is, there's this horrific accident that happens uh, in the comic book. And the drivers wind up losing control. Now, a really good thing about this series, if you've never read Stray Dogs or this one as well, is you'll never see uh, humans' faces. You will only see animal faces because they want you to focus on the animal animals, their expressions, and their interactions as well. Again, look at the character's expressions here. It really captures the reader and seeing the pain and the anguish that this fox is going through while having rabies. It's confused, it's lost, it doesn't know, causes this accident. The cats are lost. They don't know what to do now. They Should we find our house? Should we go to our master's house? And then all of a sudden they come across 
more animals that are affected by rabies and they're, for, for, uh, they're forced to survive here. We see one of the guys, he's stuck in a freaking tree. I mean, there was a lot of adventure and action right from the start here. And again, they're forced to survive in which is like a rabies apocalypse thing that is going to be affecting cats. This book is absolutely 100% worthy. You're going to love this book. Just give it time if you didn't find it all that exciting right from the beginning. This is one of those books where when I read Stray Dogs for the first time, I was like, wow, this is really good. And it got better. So that's what you can expect with Feral here as well. The only problem with it is it ended too soon and I wanted more. So at the end of the day, I'm going to give this one an A. Really liked it. Can't wait for the next issue. Ultimate Spider-Man. This is issue three. This is your bonus comic this week. Whenever Ultimate Spider-Man comes out, I'm going to put it on Worthy Ones because I can't wait to talk about it. It's one of the first books I, I read every single month when it comes out. This one was released at the same time as Amazing Spider-Man. And based off of my website that I look at, League of Comic Geeks, to create my pull list each week, this is the number one pulled comic over Amazing Spider-Man. So guys, I think it's breaking sales when it comes to the main Amazing Spider-Man title. Are you not surprised? Again, 28 pages, $5. Jonathan Hickman, Marco Cicchetto <clears throat> does the artwork in this book. And the book does not disappoint on the artwork. Again, Mary Jane looks fine. We get to see little Richard Parker there. We get to see May Parker with her dad in this issue. And the beginning of this comic is great because it has that family dynamic, which you don't see in the Amazing Spider-Man comic. And a lot of us fans have been waiting for that for a long time. So if we can't get it in Amazing... We're going to get it in Ultimate Spider-Man. Now, there's a lot of chatter out there that Chiquetto is not going to be on the artwork on this comic going forward. I think he's just not going to be on issue four, and then he's going to continue from there. So we'll see. The great thing about this comic, right, is we're trying to get Spider-Man's suit, all right? He was all black, no spider last time. May has the total input on what she wants on that suit. And seeing him go through, you know, the different types of suits that he was trying to select was hilarious. Whether it was this a black suit with webs, the Ben Riley, oh, you know, tribute, the Iron Spider suit, Spider-Man Blue, all that stuff was really, really great. And this is how that book opened up. So right from the start, it captures you. The relationship between Ben and Jonah is something we've never seen before. That's what makes this comic really fresh because Ben's always been dead right from the start. And now his best buddy is Jay Jonah and they're opening a business together. So that is really awesome. And then you just get to see kind of like the investigation at hand with the Green Goblin and, you know, Kingpin situation. And we get to see Spider-Man go on a steak hunt. And I thought that was freaking awesome. He's chilling out on a freaking hammock, eating some freaking donuts. You know, it's hilarious, some of the things. And then you get the Green Goblin who makes his appearance here. And you also get to see Bullseye for the first time. And these two fight it out with each other. You get to see some character interactions between Spider-Man and Harry. We all know it's Harry at this point, right? And, uh... Is Harry friend or foe? So you find that out by the time you get to the end as well. Once again, this comic is worthy. This is one of the best comics on the stands today, period. Next to, I would say, in my opinion, Green Lantern, Transformers. I mean, that stuff, this is just absolutely phenomenal. I am so happy right now we have a good Spider-Man comic to read and look forward to each and every month. So again, at the end of the day, I'm going to give this one an A+. Tell me in the comments below what you thought of this month's issue of Ultimate Spider-Man. So there you have it, Webheads. There are all of the number one comics and Ultimate Spider-Man comic I read for the current comic book week. I want to know your thoughts in the comments below on which 
you thought of these comics and maybe some of the other number ones you read that I didn't read. And if you want to suggest something to me, also let me know in the comments below. So if you want to see more content, there's more right here. This is my comic book haul video where I showed you everything that I picked up this current comic book week. And as always, guys, support the local comic shops. Keep buying, keep collecting, but always remember... You got to read the comics so we can talk about them. Guys, thank you so much. I'll see you real soon. Bye.